Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another episode of the Great Canadian Financial Rescue Program. I'm again with my host, co-host, Chan San. Hello, Duncan, and our listeners. So this week, we've got a rather interesting program for you. It's a little more involved than other things we've done before, um, and it requires some visual assistance. So for that reason, I'm going to tell you that we've posted it online at our the Great Canadian Financial Rescue Program YouTube channel, or TGC FRP. So if you get lost, don't worry, go to the channel. We'll tell you uh, step by step as we progress how to visualize things, but we think because this is a little more involved than a typical episode, we think it's necessary uh, for a diagram. So this week's episode is centered around preparing for retirement and specifically a simple set of maneuvers with your assets that will hopefully protect them somewhat from taxes and let you have a little better lease on life in your golden years. So to begin, I'm going to ask you to picture three boxes in a row, a horizontal row. The first box is labeled non-registered investment. The second one, a pension, say it from the government or from a private company. The third one is your Registered Retirement Savings Program, RRSP. Next to that, another box called Government. And below that box, three little boxes called CPP OAS GIS. So the little box underneath Government, CPP Canada Pension Plan. Second box, OAS. OAS standing for Old Age Security and GIS, Guaranteed Income Supplement. And next to that are two more boxes labeled House and TFSA, or Tax-Free Savings Account. So you should have six boxes in a row, and one of them underneath government has three little boxes underneath it. Hopefully that's enough of a visualization to help you picture it, but if it isn't, Go to the YouTube channel and see how, just go to the YouTube channel and you'll see how we group them to be able to understand what it is we're talking about. So the first thing you need to understand about these boxes is how CRA views them, Canada Revenue Agency. Are they considered revenue and thus are they taxable? So for a non-registered investment, really, if it's under your name, it's registered. But you could own some things that are not necessarily titled or have your name on them. But non-registered investments, pension, RRSP, and even CPP, these are all viewed as income and taxable. Isn't that right, Chan? That's correct. Uh, thank you, Duncan, for uh, laying out on the boxes. So normally, technically, when we retire, there's only a few areas that we, our reti- retirement income is coming from. As you mentioned earlier, it could be come from our non-registered account. Um, or if we're lucky enough to have pension, we have pension. And then if we have enough extra money, we could save money into our RSP. And the third, uh, the the fourth one would be the uh, the government. The government also gives us uh, some pension, where we have a CPP, OS, and GIS. Um, uh, the uh, the f- uh, fourth one is most likely majority of people never thought about is their house. Uh, they could use as a retirement income also. So if you're at least currently, if you're CRA kind of revenue agency and you're looking at things that are income and taxable, what are those line items? So most of the uh, uh, income we have is taxable. Uh, So we're talking about things that are income, viewed as income, and are fully taxable by CRA. Technically, everything that you make is taxable. Uh, Anything that is coming from your non-registered investment is taxable, your uh, pension, is taxable. For example, if you withdraw money from RSP, 
those things are also taxable. Suffice it to say that RRSPs, or Registered Retirement Savings Plans, require its own episode because there's a thousand and one different financial maneuvers you can make with them depending on your income bracket. And because of that, we need a separate program, which will come later. But for now, suffice it to say, in general, CRA views the income that you pull out of an RRSP as both income and taxable. Under the government box, there's the Canada Pension Plan. Why don't you tell us a little about that, Chant? Normally, what people have is that they either have to save their own retirement or uh, the company they have the pension. Yes, uh, government. Uh, if you ever work in Canada, the gov- uh, you contribute to the plan, the CPP plan, and when you retire, you could uh, the, uh, you will get the pension, which is uh, inflation inducted to your uh, when you want to withdraw. It. You will have, you will have that cash flow. The government also provide an uh, uh, OAS, which whoever live in Canada for more than ten years, they will receive OAS, regardless whether they're working in the uh, working in Canada or not. It doesn't matter as long as you uh, live in Canada you are qualified to get OAS. And the third uh, uh, government has is what we call a guaranteed income supplement. Uh, this one here is um, for people who are for low income people uh, to, get, to receive extra money from the government. Therefore, government will provide three different uh, income stream, CPP, OAS, and GS, depends on your situation. What? what you qualify for. And then the last two boxes are your house and TFSA, which is tax-free savings account. So tell us a little bit about the tax-free savings account and house. For the tax-free savings account, if, uh, most people in Canada know about it. It's mainly uh, an account where you could put your money into it. And when you take it out and it's uh, tax-free, and what is... Um, Money it earn or the investment you earn in there is um, is not taxable. Uh, as for your house, more uh, majority of people, if they have their house uh, paid for, they could actually use that as their retire as their retirement income also. However, it requires some planning on getting those um, uh, cash flow of your existing house. You don't have to sell it. But you just make to I uh, want to make sure you speak with a mortgage broker that specialized in the retirement area. So, houses are a potential target for taxation. That's correct. But currently, the principal residence uh, does not have. If you sell your principal residence, there is no tax. It's tax free. Uh, there's some spe- speculation on the on the street saying that the government actually look into taxing the um, principal residence. So the total amount, if you were thinking about starting a TFSA and you haven't done one yet, the grand tally to date is $88,000 you can put in and all the money that's earned inside that account isn't taxed. That account expands out to, for example, from $88,000 to say $100,000 in a couple of years and you take some money out, you still have up to $100,000 plus whatever new allocations per year were added to the TFSA. Maybe it's $120,000, $130,000. It's a great way to invest money into an account and not have it taxed. Wouldn't you agree? That's correct. Uh, A lot of people didn't take advantage of our uh, tax-free saving account. Uh, what happened is, for example, for our emergency fund, we could put the money in there, earn some interest, where the interest that um, we earn, it doesn't become taxable. It's, it's free money. Uh, most, most importantly, what we need to do is how to keep the most money in our pocket. But there are some significant limitations. For example, you can't operate, say, a um, stock trading entity operation inside a TFSA. It's not designed to hide money from your principal means of making money. 
Well, uh, our CIA is looking into people who use the um, TSFA to buy and sell regularly as a, a, a regular trading account. Uh, they might look into your account and is, they might say you cannot, you are not allowed to do that. Uh, that is best to double check with your accountant and how, depends on how much trade you do in the TSFA. The safest thing to do is buy something and hold it for long term or buy something that generate dividends. Okay, Chan, so we've laid out the basic structure of the boxes, and now we're at the point where we need to discuss what it is we want to achieve in retirement. And in general, that is to minimize our tax liability, in other words, how much taxes we're going to pay, and maximize our availability for either government programs or to improve the spending threshold our money will have in quote-unquote the golden years. So we'll start with our first four blocks. Non-registered investment, a pension, the RRSP, Registered Retirement Savings Plan, and CPP, the Canada Pension Plan. As a group, CRA, Canada Revenue Agency, views all of them as income and fully taxable. Is there any maneuvering room, Chan, that people can have as they prepare for retirement with these four blocks? Yes, uh, that is uh, different things for when we plan for our retirement cash flow, our uh, spending money. Uh, we have to look at the entire financial pictures, holistically financial view of your entire thing. And if you mainly have uh, uh, some taxable income, you like to move it to non-taxable income where your income is not taxable. Um, for example, if we, we could move to TSFA, for example, we could uh, reduce that. And then whatever we make from the TSFA is not taxable. And uh, let's say if we still have some uh, mortgage that we need to pay. So if we have extra money from there, we just pay off our mortgage. And then um, we could draw our, our, our mortgage, uh, the money from there to spend. That's perfectly fine. To oh, hold, make hold, on, hold on. You're saying that you could take money, apply it to your mortgage, and then pull it out tax-free? Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Uh, what happens is if you have extra money on, uh, let's say, investment account, and let's say we have uh, uh, $200,000 and we have mortgage on the house for $200,000. So when we retire, it's better to get our in, uh, investment money, pay off our house and get a live credit on it. So whenever we take the money out from the, our house, that is not taxable. Uh, that, that is not taxable. Are you talking like a home equity? Live credit. Live that's, credit? Co that's correct. Home, life, home, life equity, uh, home equity live credit is a great tools for people who is preparing for to retirement. So when it comes to retirement, it's very, very important to do a plan way ahead. Let's, just, let's say you start at uh, age 55 and you look at the situation, what you need to do, how you want to prepare for retirement. And uh, by the time you're 65, you want to move most of your uh, money to a non-taxable, uh, non-income uh, asset that you could draw out to get the most benefit from the, the government. The second box under government plans called O-Age Security, Old Age Security, OAS, is taxable, but it's not viewed as income by the Government of Canada when you're considering applying for GIS, Guaranteed Income Supplement. Why is that important, Chen? That's correct, Duncan. Uh, when we look into GIS, um, for every dollar we have coming in, uh, is considered as uh, in, uh, uh, income. That's correct, Duncan. Uh, when uh, applying for GIS, uh, OAS does not consider as income. When uh, at retirement age, at uh, six, 65, we want to minimize our income to get the maximize uh, the GIS. Therefore, we should move most of the uh, um, taxable income to non-taxable income or asset that we hold. Therefore, what we want to do is to uh, move, uh, like for example, investment income, 
the pension, the uh, RSP, we try to move to the um, non-taxable income, uh, like uh, our house and our TSFA. So Chan, let's talk about a, mecha- a mechanism that we might want to use to take something like a non-registered investment and move it into TFSA. There's a little, we'll call it bump in the road people need to be aware of uh, when they do this. So let's say I bought Microsoft stock, just hypothetically, I bought it at $100 a share. Now it's worth $200 a share. What do I need to be aware of when I try to move those shares into my TFSA? Let's say when you move the uh, the stock, for example, to into TSFA, and uh, when you move in, they consider as they they will use the market value to uh, to contribute to your TSFA, and you have to pay tax on the the difference uh, the, from the hundred dollars to two hundred dollars. So you have a capital gain of one hundred dollars. So that one hundred dollars become taxable event. So it may cost you a fair amount of money to move things into a TFSA, but if you pay really hawkish attention to the share value price when you're doing the maneuver, you might actually not have to pay any tax. The best thing to do is to plan ahead. So when you have a non-registered investment account and when you have the room to contribute to a TSFA, that's why people need to understand the situation first. Instead of buying the, uh, the asset in the uh, non-register, they should put money into the TSFA if they want to hold for a long term. So Chan, just running through all the combinations, obviously a pension because it's given by either the government or a private company, you really can't, without paying full tax on it, run it into your TFSA. And the same thing with an RSP. You can't transfer directly, that I know of, from an RSP to a TFSA without paying full tax, correct? That's very true. Uh, depends on what you have and how much you have in, in your RSP. Once we take the money out form, RSP or pension, the money is already taxed. So we don't need to put into RSP. And if you we have room, we could put in RSP to reduce our taxable income. Normally, if you are rich at age 65, when you qualify for OS and GIS, and you have to look, you have to evaluate whether you want to withdraw your RSP to receive more GIS, or you want to uh, defer your RSP until you are 71, when you require to uh, turn that into a RIFT. Uh, um, what, RIF, Registered Retirement Income Fund? fund. Correct. Uh, so what happened at by 71, you have to start, you taking, have to start taking it out. Uh, if not, uh, the RSP have to be dissolved. We could take out the entire amount at once or we turn to the retire, retirement income fund where we could take out slowly. Uh, there's a, a percentage that the government give uh, us to take it out. We have to have to have at least withdraw that that amount. So therefore, if we don't have much, in, if we don't have pension, and we could move on our um, non-registered investment to TSFA or to our house, so we have a better chance to qualify for GIS. So as a group, it's better when we retired uh, to have uh, because the house, TSFA, and GIS, according to CIA, they're not viewed as income and it's not taxable so therefore you want to hold on the money in that this three group so you could have a little more gs to coming in that's why when we have rsp we are at 65 we have to evaluate whether you want to hold on to the rsp without touching it once we take out each dollar we take out it will affect uh, our gis for every dollar we take it out the GIS benefit will reduce 50 cents. Therefore, technically, we are paying at the high tax bracket. And if it, you live in BC and you make more than $15,000 of income, you get hit twice. You get hit by reduce the GIS and you get to pay tax on your income, which come close to every dollar you make, you pay 70% tax on your dollar, 
which is the highest tax bucket you could have. So let's use an example to drive the point home. Let us assume that someone has no non-registered investment, no pension, they deferred CPP because maybe they want a larger sum later on, and we'll be doing an episode on, on that uh, as well, on the CPP, whether to consider delaying or not. But let's assume all they have for an income stream is an RRSP. And let's say that person also wants to apply to GIS. What are the consequences of taking, say, $100 out of that RRSP? That's a very interesting uh, uh, question, Duncan. Uh, in your example, if you have no investment, no pension, the only thing we have is RRSP. Normally, it depends on the situation, whether we want to get a CPP or not, is based on how much money we have in RRSP. So assuming someone doesn't have a non-registered investment, nor do they have a pension, but say they have some money in an RRSP, and they've deferred, for whatever reason, their CPP to maximize the amount. What happens when they take, say, $100 out of an RRSP while they're, applying, while they're trying to get GIS? This is quite interesting. A lot of people just know about it, Duncan. Uh, as soon as they have income of $100, uh, they take the $100 out. The GIS benefit will reduce by 50%. So uh, $100 take $100 out they will lose $50 of uh, GIS. Therefore, it's best to evaluate when to take the RSP out. And if the RSP is high enough, there will be tax on it. So therefore, they're losing on the GIS benefit, plus they have to pay tax. Let's say if they, um, the tax bracket is in the 20% uh, tax bracket, and uh, they lose 50% of the GIS benefit. Therefore, technically, they're losing 70% of their money. Therefore, they have to be very careful on how to uh, withdraw the money and how, when to withdraw the money. So if they're, say, of a lower income, it might be pretty wise to start planning a maneuver of RRSP assets into a TFSA. Uh, I would say it is to reduce the RSP amount. Uh, there's a few things that you could do to make sure that um, you're, uh, you're maximizing the GIS. One thing is when you are before 60, you could start taking the money out. so that at, um, Or you could retire a little bit early, take the money out and buy 65, and then you fully qualify for the, uh, the benefit. As always... When you are looking at your financial profile, you need to know where you stand. Do you have non-registered investments? Do you have a pension? Do you have an RRSP? What value, what amount are you going to get from CPP and when? You need to know this in order to plan ahead. Otherwise, you're not going to have a very successful retirement through no fault of your own. Would you say that's a pretty uh, fair assessment, Chan? That's uh, correct, uh, Duncan. Uh, majority of Canadians don't plan ahead. Um, the best time to start look at your, your planning, roughly about five to, five to ten years before you retire. And uh, you have to plan properly. Um, a lot of things that um, when we retire, and let's say, for example, if we want to have a HELOC on our house, we have to get that before we retire. The home life of of home line equity of credit. credit. So if we don't have that, and uh, when we need the money when we retire, we cannot qualify for to get a loan anymore. Therefore, we want to get that. The other option is to get a reverse reverse mortgage, which is much more expensive than just a straight line uh, home line of credit. As always, we encourage anyone to talk to their financial advisor and financial investment advisor. The reason being everybody's situation is different. Things can happen unexpectedly. And we only provide advice in this matter by making you aware of some consequences of not planning ahead. That's very, very true. Uh, hopefully that um, most of Canadians are not 
planning ahead. Uh, they just uh, think that they will get the pension uh, from the government. And if we plan properly, we could significantly increase our cash flow when we retired. And therefore have a, in theory, much better time. Oh, definitely. Well, folks, that's another episode from the Great Canadian Financial Rescue Program. Check us out on YouTube. The diagram will be there with all the circles to tell you uh, about income taxable, um, not income but taxable, and not income and not taxable groups that we discussed today. Looking forward to hearing from you. Again, our the, the Great Canadian Financial Rescue Program website. Ask us any question you want. We don't track, and uh, we certainly don't advertise or send advertisers your way. <laughs>